Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And this is the first part of a two-part series on how to design from scratch vases that you then print on a 3D printer. In part one, we're going to cover how to use FreeCAD to design vases using two different techniques. One that's suitable for more complex vases, and you can see in this close-up that there's a lot of detail in this vase. That's using a technique called lofting. And the other, which is appropriate for simpler vases, and that's a technique called a revolve. But that's only the first part of this two-part series. You're gonna wanna watch them both. In the second part, I'll show you how to slice these models, how to prepare them in a slicer using the Cura slicer and the Prusa slicer so that it covers pretty much all of the machines you might wanna print a vase on and why your model doesn't have to be hollow when you first prepare it. But what the limitations are in preparing models using the vase mode or the spiralized mode or the surface mode, depending on the terminology used in your slicer. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. Now we're going to get started in FreeCAD. This should not be your very first FreeCAD tutorial. Um, there's a link up in the corner to a series of FreeCAD videos, which are a better place for you to start. This is, I'm going to assume in this video that you have a basic understanding of FreeCAD. Now, that said, I'll point out a couple things that tend to get people confused, cause some difficulty when using FreeCAD. Okay, let's get started with FreeCAD and take a look at the screen together. This is FreeCAD 0.19, which is still a pre-release, but it's been a pre-release for a while. My guess is it's pretty close to becoming the standard release. I think that 0.19 is more stable than 0.18, which is the official public release. And in one of the videos linked above, I'll show you how to install and configure this version. Let's begin in the part design workbench select part design, and then click on this icon up here in the corner to create a new empty document. You could also go to file new. I'm going to then click on tasks, create a body, create a sketch on the X, Z plane. Because we're going to do a rotation, I want it on the X, Z plane. Click OK. Now the first thing we're going to do is create the vertical height of our model. I'm going to click on the line tool, hover over our origin, start it on the origin, and click somewhere up here and create a line. Now you notice that there were little icons next to my line tool while I was doing that. One was a dot with a curve, that's the tangent constraint. The other was a vertical line, that's the vertical constraint. Those are constraints that will automatically be applied if I'm drawing something close enough to an axis that it thinks I want either a horizontal or a vertical line. Now I have my line tool selected still, so I'm going to left click one time and then draw the base. Now I'm going to right click and deselect that so I can move around here. Now let me move this over here so we have a little more room. Now I'm going to select the line tool by left clicking. Go to the top of that line so it turns white. Go over here and now and then right click. So left click to start a line, left click to end the line, and then right click to disable the tool, turn off the tool. Now. We're going to want our vase to have a straight part and then a curve part. So let's put the straight part in first. Click on the line tool, left click there, and we'll go down just a little bit here. Left click again, right click. Now we want the curve part. Well, for the curve part, 
I'm going to use this tool up here, which is called a B spline. And we're going to use a B spline with control points. So click on that once to activate the tool. Then I'm going to hover over this point here so it turns white. I'm going to left click and let's put a point here. And the more points you add, the more control you're going to have over your ultimate shape. And don't worry that it looks like they're straight lines. It's going to round them out for you. I'm going to left click on this point and then right click because I'm done. Now I'm going to right click one more time to turn off the tool and I can hover over these various points here and change what this vase looks like. So I could make this rather interesting like this. I could make it um, the first half more or less straight. And this is all stuff you can just play around with. Now, one thing you have to worry about, if I was to create a, let's zoom in here and put this on the center. If I was to create a shape like this, I couldn't print it on a 3D printer. Why? This is an overhang. It would collapse on me. So I have to make sure that my curve is gradual enough, whatever shape I decide I want, so that it is in fact a printable shape. So there's a very interesting shape here. So now I'm going to close this model. Now I could fully constrain this because if I knew it as an example that I wanted this base to be, I don't know, um, let's say 40 millimeters, I could click and highlight that. And then I could put a constraint, a horizontal constraint. And right now it's 17. I could switch it to 40. Now, clearly I'm going to have to make the rest of this bigger also. So we're going to take and move these all around. And you can see this is going to take a lot of trial and error to get the shape that you're looking for. Let's zoom out and move this up. So it looks like a vase again. Now I can close it. This drawing is just a slice. So if we go here and we select this drawing, you'll see one of the options is revolution. Click on that and you will have your first vase. Now that's a very weird looking vase. So we're going to probably want to make some changes. So let's go ahead and say, okay, but let's go back to our model, go to revolution and double click on sketch and now change it. So it seems like having that bottom at 40 doesn't work very well. I'm going to actually delete that constraint, highlighted it, click delete. And then we can pull this in a little bit and let's make this a more interesting, whoops, looks like it's this one that we have to move first. We have to make sure once again, it's not vertical there. So we'll be able to print it. This looks like it might be a little more interesting as a vase now. So let's close it. And there we go. So that's a little bit more interesting. Now I think I'd actually like this bulge to be up a little higher. So I'm going to go back to the sketch one more time. Whoops. There we go. And let's move this up a little bit while still being cognizant of the fact that we don't want to create an overhang that we can't print. There we go. 
Let's make one final change. And I'm just going to move this line up quite a bit to make it a little more interesting. And now that looks like a classic vase. So select the body, go to file, export, and we're going to give it a name, FreeCAD Revolution um, Vase. We're going to save it. I had one there, so we're going to save over it. Now let's go to File, Save, and this will save, Save versus Export. Export creates your STL file. Save gives you a copy of your work. And we're going to save that one. This time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to create a vase that looks like this, that starts as a circle, then has a hexagon, in this case, we had another hexagon here than a circle. I'm going to make this one even a little different than this with a circle, a hexagon, a circle, and a circle. Let's see how that comes out. So I'm in my park design workbench. I go to file new. I'm going to go to tasks, create a body, create a sketch, and I'm going to do this on the XY plane so we can build these up one at a time. XY plane. Okay. And let's create the base first. So we're going to click on the circle tool with the left mouse button, highlight the origin, and let's say we make the base about that big. And that's all we're going to do on this sketch. Now I'm going to create another sketch, also on the XY plane. And this second sketch is going to be a hexagon. So click on the hexagon tool, left click over the origin and drag it out. I want this to be a little bigger. Let's say about there. Then I'm going to right click to complete that tool, close my model. So I have a circle changing to a hexagon. Then we're going to go back to a circle and then to a circle again. So I'm going to create another sketch on the XY plane. I'm going to create here a circle hover over the origin. And this one's going to be in between those sizes. Close. And finally, a final circle. And this one will be for the very top. And this will be the smallest. Okay, so now I have here four sketches. Let's rename those. I'm going to click on a name, hit enter. And here I'm going to say bottom, middle, we'll call this middle top, and we'll call this top. Now, if you look at these sketches now, if we look on the screen, we we'll see they're all sort of at the same level. We want to change the levels they're at. And we're going to do that by changing their attachment. Attachment is where in the space this is going to reside. So we're going to start with the bottom. And we'll see here if we click on attachment, not placement, that moves the whole space around. Attachment. And we look at position. It's at a Z axis of zero. That's correct. It's on the very bottom. Now we're going to go to middle. And we're going to change the Z axis of this one to be, oh, I don't know. Let's make this about 50 millimeters. Okay, moved it up. And now let's go to hit enter, hit middle top. And we'll make this one about 90 millimeters. And then we're going to take the top and we're going to make that 130 millimeters. So you can see here we have these sketches at different places. It's a fascinating technique. Now I'm going to go to tasks. Now I'm going to click on the bottom layer. And under tasks, you'll see there's additive loft. And then I'm going to add section. So I click on add section and I add this one. Click on add section. I add this one. Click on add section. I add this one. And we've now created a vase. 
This is not very interesting though. So let's click on OK. And you know, I think I'd like this to be a little fatter in the middle. Um, so let's go back to our model. And under Additive Loft, if I expand that, I can see these various sketches. So I'm going to click on Middle. And sometimes FreeCAD will pop back to the Start page. I don't know why it does that, but it does. You just have to click back to your model. And I'm just going to make this hexagon a little bigger. Now I'm going to close it. Ah, a little bit more interesting. Bit extreme though. So let's go to top. And let's zoom in here and move this into the middle of our screen so you can see it. There we go. Now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to make that a little bigger also. Close it. Okay. Now we're getting there. Um, I think I need to make this one a little bit bigger also and this um, a little different. So let's go to middle top, make that a little bigger. And let's go to top, make that a little bigger. Oh, that's quite interesting, but the bottom looks like it would fall over um, if I rotate this. I don't think that would stand very well. So let's go to bottom, make that a little bigger. And now we have actually a quite an interesting looking vase. It's different than this, but you can see this was done by just making this layer smaller. So we can create many, many different types of vases this way. So we've learned two techniques here. One is the technique of creating a slice and rotating it around in order to create a vase. The other is by creating layers and lofting them. Okay, I think that's enough for this video. Make sure you watch the next video, which is part two, where we're going to learn how to slice these. And I'm going to quickly go ahead and select the body and select export. And let's call this loft version two save it away, and now we're ready for that next video. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I found, hope you found this interesting. If you did, give me a thumbs up, click on the bell so you're notified about my next video. And make sure you recommend this channel to everyone you know. You want to discuss what we learned? Go to forum.drvax.com. Let's continue to learn things together.